Hello everyone. I hope you all are doing well. So this side Priya Bhatia and in this particular video we will talk about another amazing concept with respect to machine learning playlist and that is about the regularization methods. I hope that before coming to this video you already have watched my previous video where I had talked about something called as overfitting versus underfitting. And what we have concluded in that video that neither we want our model to be overfitted nor we want our model to be underfitted right there is a trade off between these two things and today in this particular video we will try to explore that how we can avoid this overfitting right so we will talk about majorly two different categories of regularization methods one is called as lasso another one is called as rich so let's get started and try to understand the mathematical intuition behind both of these things So I hope you all remember that linear regression video where we have talked about something called as mean squared error or what I, what I usually call as ghost function error function so what was the error rate that we have observed in the linear regression video if you remember i told you in that video itself that the error is something which is the difference between the values of y and y cap right difference between the values of y and y cap whole square summation of i equals to 1 to n 1 by n now here if you will observe this is something which we called as mse or the full form is something which we called as mean squared error right i hope you all remember this stuff just few few days back only uh, we have studied these things right now what is this y cap y cap is nothing but is the uh, predicted values that the prediction which is given by the model predicted values and this is something which you can say is the actual values which is given to me right so now whatever be the difference we are getting is something which we are saying as msc and what we really want we really want our msc value to be very very low that's what our scenario is that's what our target is right then only you you can say that okay my model behaves or it works best am i saying it correct so now the problem was that if suppose i will be having a i am applying a linear regression model and i will be having something input as the height and i i really want to predict something called as weight of a person right just try to understand the scenario now if suppose if you will observe here suppose i will be having a lot of data points like this like this like this like this like this okay now one way is something where you can say that your model is uh, making a best fit line like this right this is something which is not a best fit line and that's where i said this problem as a underfitting one way is that your model is not making this best fit line but you keep on training your model and this kind of scenario is happening just look into this look into this what i am doing here right this scenario is happening what i should say this this is something which i called as a overfitting so the red dot which i am marking here is something which i am calling as a problem of overfitting that's for sure and even that orange marked line is also something which is a problem in my model called as underfitting what i really want is i really want to avoid both of these scenarios and maybe i am looking for some this kind of a line right which basically best fits to my complete data when i am saying best fit what what does that indicate that simply indicates that it generalizes well right on my complete set of data points that i have now what we really want maybe when i am talking about the first orange line the equation of the line was uh, y is equals to maybe mx plus c right but when you moved from this underfitted line to overfitted line your equation of line will become something like y is equals to maybe m1 x1 plus m2 x2 square plus m3 x3 square plus not square it's cube right plus m4 x4 to the power 4 plus c 
Now, what is Y here? Y is obviously the output that we really want to predict here, which is the weight. I should say it as Y cap, right? And X is the input value, which is the height in our case. So, Y cap or Y is the weight which I am saying here, right? And the value of X is something which we are considering as the height in our equation. But what I am saying is, my balanced fit equation looks like this. My balanced fit equation looks like this. So, my balanced fit equation looks like y is equals to or y cap is equals to m1 x1 plus m2 x2 square plus c. Now, what I really want is, I really want my value of m3 and m4 to be penalized. Can I say? Because this overfitting is something which is very dangerous. Why? Because, okay, at the time of training, if you are simply applying this MSE, you will get a training error as zero. Will you agree with me? Because the value of Y and the value of Y cap exactly matches. That's fine. That's fine. But when you will deploy this model and will test this model on a test data, automatically what will happen? There will be sharp increase in the error. Because this particular equation, which is uh, uh, denoted by red line, will not be a generalized equation. Right? So, what I really want is, I really want to find this kind of an equation. I really want to generalize my complete data set points with, the, with, the, with respect to this particular equation. So, what can I do here is, I need to maybe uh, penalize the values of M3 and M4. So, how we can do so, that's where I think you now you can give a thought by posing the video and that's where the concept of regularization techniques came into picture. That's where the very first technique called as L1 regularization, which is also famous by the name of lasso, came into picture. Now, what this lasso says? This lasso says that what I will do is, I will try to change a little bit in the cost function or in the MSC value. I will try to add in the MSC one more term, which is lambda times absolute value of beta j. Now, this is equals to summation of i equals to 1 to j equals to 1 to p. Now, here this is the kind of an equation. You can say this is the uh, new, I would say, cost function or the error function which my model will be able to work on. Now, how this particular cost function will help me to avoid that overfitting value? Because now in this particular case, I don't want to reduce that MSE, the previous MSE right where i will be having only the value y minus y cap whole square but here i really want to reduce this complete set of values so what will happen is even though even though in the overfitting case you directly get the value as zero but still there will be a values okay let me tell you what this indicates this beta j indicates the coefficients in your equation in our equation in today's equation that we are following our coefficients are m1 right m2 m3 and m4 so what we are trying to do is we are trying to add the absolute values of these right and what we really want is obviously by after addition of these values you will get some value suppose you get some value as maybe 9 i am just randomly assuming just to make you guys understand so now i was not getting the value as 0 so my model will not get converged there so what will happen is my model will keep on doing the training until it reaches to a point where my new cost function will be minimum. My new error rate will be minimum. I hope you will be able to get a point that how my model will be able to reduce that overfitting thing which was happening before via the, that MSE function. Right? So the only difference between this L1 versus this L2. Let me talk about L2 regularization method as well which is also famous by the name of ridge ridge both are the techniques to you know penalize that coefficients but here the only difference is what will happen is this will be msc will remain same lambda of j equals to 1 to p again will remain same here we are just lambda times we are just adding beta j of whole square you can say so instead of you know taking the coefficients here, I am trying to take the square of that. 
Now I'll talk about the, the difference between these two and at what point of time we should go for what kind of a technique. But let me just write it down. So here, this is the only difference that you will observe in the L1 versus the L2. But this difference uh, is really determining that at what point of time we should go for what kind of a cost function, right? How? See, what will happen here, if suppose your M1, what you are trying to do here, each and every point of time, you are trying to keep on reducing this new cost function value, new, I would say, error rate value, right? So, what will happen here? If you are value, if you are focusing on something called as L1, regularization, so you are trying to reduce this actual values of M1, M2, M3, M4 at every iteration. So, what will happen after some point of time, you will observe that in L1 regularization or in LASO, right? What will happen is that after some point of time, some slope value will become zero. It means that those features are not that much important with respect to the features, whatever coefficients will get zero. What does that indicate? That those features are not that much important. So, this LASO regularization technique, that's why is commonly useful or is commonly famous as a feature selection technique as well. Feature selection technique as well. So, the major prerequisite to understand this video is the linear regression video. If you don't know about that video and you're directly coming here, you won't be able to get anything. So, that's the major prerequisite. After that, you should have an understanding of overfitting versus underfitting. So, in my playlist, everything is in an ordered form. So, you just have to follow it in a sequence, right? So, the, so, so that you will be able to get whatever I am conveying here. So, now what I am saying is that at each and every iteration, when we are reducing this value of uh, new cost function or the error function that we have, what will happen? Because in the L1, we are dealing with the direct values of coefficients. It will become zero after certain point of time for some slopes. So, what I have mentioned here that for, for some coefficients that you are seeing here m1 m2 m3 m4 you will observe that the value is tending to zero what does that indicate that simply indicates that those features are not important right and that's why that's why i am saying that this is one of the feature major good technique for a feature selection the similar thing will not happen in bridge. Why is that? So, because even though my value will become very small in, for the value of m, but when I am squaring it, it will become big. Make sense? So, there is a, another technique which you can uh, obviously can see on several websites called as elastic net. Elastic net. Now, elastic net is a combination of above both of the both of above techniques. So, it is a combination of I would say. L1 and L2. So, in the equation of elastic net, we usually provide the weightage. So, do you want to give a more weightage to lasso or do you want to give a more weightage to rich? So, if you want to, that's a good choice to have an elastic net where we can give a weightage and accordingly we can uh, adjust our cost functions. So, what we have observed in, in this today's video, we have talked about but how we can avoid this overfitting problem? What is the meaning of overfitting problem? Where my model directly fits to all the data points in such a way that my training error is zero. My MSC value is zero that we have already understood in the linear regression uh, sessions. Now, how we can avoid that? How we can reach from this equation to a balanced fit equation? We have observed that we need to somehow uh, make this M3, M4 as 0 or we need to somehow reduce these uh, values. So, that's where the concept of lasso and ridge came into picture. We have observed that the only difference between lasso and ridge is its uh, beta value. What is beta? It's a coefficient. Okay, what is this lambda? This is a kind of a hyperparameter. Okay, this is a kind of a hyperparameter that how much you want to reduce the values of M1 and M2, the rate via which your values will get penalized. So, that you can change, right? Now, in both, both of these cases, we have this lambda. The only difference is the value of coefficient. In one case, in the lasso, we are taking it as absolute. In the rich, we are taking a squaring of that. 
when we are talking about elastic net it's a combination of both of these but to provide we, we are providing in that case some weightage whichever particular regression uh, we want to give a more weightage we will provide a more weightage to that for example i want a ridge so i will provide more weightage towards the ridge part right one more thing very important thing that we have observed which is very importantly asked in interviews that how this lasso will become a feature selection technique but not the ridge because ultimately what we are trying to do at each and every time we are trying to reduce our uh, new cost functions that we are getting right so after some point of time after some iterations what will happen that for the features which are not really important the values will become tending to zero right in case of uh, lasso but it will not happen in bridge because there we are doing a squaring of that so now i and hope that you will be able to get a clear cut understanding behind how we can avoid any overfitting in a model via these regularization methods so with this i'll see you all very soon in the next upcoming video where now we will talk about the implementation of whatever concepts we have studied today right but till then keep learning keep sharing these videos and uh, do subscribe to my channel it would really mean a lot to me bye bye happy learning to all